it's pretty much a ghost town right now. A lot of the water has come out of the Gulf. The family actually created, if you guys uh, look right over here, a memorial in their front yard for Brittany Wood. They believe they actually siphoned about 200 gallons. First responders seem to have everything under control. Whoa. Look right there, guys. And that is exactly like the first two explosions that we've seen. The fire department is actually backing up on the other side of the river as well. They're trying to move everybody as far away as possible. The high tide, the wind, the water's kind of picked up. It's pushed all the way up against the parking lot. Now you had more than 100 people marching through the streets of downtown Mobile. Many of them say they want the same thing. She says the attacker was a coward who came at her from behind. Do you know why, I guess, the county asked you to take a polygraph test? Yes, to see if I had any involvement with Donald Holland. And then I guess why why didn't you take it? When I come back at 5:30, I'll see if I can get something together for you guys. I do. Elanise wants to see it. 105. You can only be so lucky. <laughs> Some, however, are questioning if it's a realistic budget. Coach went home to count the collection jars. And a surprise fell out, someone's wedding ring. Don't forget to join the conversation. It's happening right now on our Facebook page at Fox 10 News. The two on your screen are no Bonnie and Clyde. They're not very coordinated. Check this out. They even locked themselves out of their own getaway van at one point. They are, however, wanted criminals, wanted for a rash of smash and grabs at local businesses. Tried open the personnel door come into the stock room and started snatching and, and grabbing. Tommy Smith of Audio Unlimited in the Tillman's Corner area says his shop was hit over the weekend. Police believe a stolen van backed up into the garage doors, creating just enough space for these guys to slip in and right back out. Coincidentally or not, a similar van was caught on surveillance cameras at Rim Time Custom Rims and Tires just a few miles away. So they come here for rims, they go there for radio parts. I mean, what, what do you think these guys are trying I to do? I guess they're trying to put a car together. <laughs> Miles Wilson, who works at Rim Time, says not only were the pair caught on camera crashing the stolen van into a business early Sunday morning, but the pair was caught a second time on Monday doing it all over again, just hours after the store had boarded up. I couldn't believe they did it twice in a row. And the same people, you know, same van. It was just crazy. That's the economy we're in, I guess. Now, detectives say the van that was used to crash through this building more than one time had actually been stolen from the Mobile County Public School System just yesterday. Detectives recovered that vehicle. Between the two businesses, we're talking about a $30,000 plus bill in damage and stolen property, all for rims that these guys need matching sets for and audio equipment that police say they probably won't be able to sell. Emergency officials tell me this is one of the hardest hit areas in Escambia County. It doesn't look like it right now, but you can kind of see the floodwaters have receded. But yesterday at this apartment complex, more than 200 residents had to be evacuated. And here's why. Mike, if you can kind of take a look right over here, there's a very thin line of made up of uh, dirt and mud. That's how high some of these floodwaters had gotten. Of course, that means a lot of damage. Look at it. Karen Robinson returns to her Pensacola apartment just two days after a weekend washout forced her from her home. All my stuff, just everything I have. I've been crying the whole weekend. <laughs> Knee deep floodwaters made its way into her first floor unit, ruining her clothes, her furniture. Robinson says she saw the water take over her living room in less than 15 minutes, so she made a run for it. A puddle of water just came and formed all in my living room, all through my house. After that, I just slammed the door as hard as I could, locked it and ran away. Some 200 units at Forest Creek Apartments where she lives were evacuated on Saturday. Many residents like Robinson, though, chose to ride out the rainstorm and catch it all on camera. Kiana Brown says she was at home with her eight-month-old when she realized it was just way too much water to handle. The water started coming through the door, the front door first. And then it started coming through the back door, and I say, y'all, water coming in the house. She says she put her baby in a small tub and walked through the raging floodwaters to safety. Like many at the complex, she returned to salvage what little she can. Now, all things considered, the flooding has gone down dramatically since this storm over the weekend. Right now, what emergency crews are trying to do is figure out just how much damage this thing caused widespread. And it'll take a couple of months to get that done. Crews are working to survey the area and get a final estimate on damage. 
Meanwhile, residents are left picking up the pieces, trying to find a new home. I don't know. I have to stay with family and friends until they can give us some place to go or another apartment. I don't know when that's going to be. John Andrew says his two-year-old grandson, Hezekiah Brooks, was a very bright child, very independent, full of laughter. The two, no doubt, shared a special bond. I knew what he was thinking, and he knew what I was thinking. Whenever he, uh, whenever he ran into a problem, he came to me, and he grabbed me by my hand, and he pulled me to that problem, whether it was his mother or his grandmother, the, the rooster, you know. He'd take me out there to kick the rooster's butt. <laughs> like so many Sundays before, Andrew says they were laying down that afternoon, watching cartoons and eating at their home along Hermie Avenue. He says the toddler got up, wanting to see his nana, who was in the next room. But about 20 minutes later, he says the two-year-old was nowhere to be found. Usually, I can find him. He's usually, you know, peeking around the corner. <laughs> and, uh, but... I couldn't find him, so I went in panic mode, you know. Authorities believe the toddler wandered out of the house and managed to somehow open the family car door. Relatives and deputies started searching all through the area, not realizing Hezekiah had locked himself in the car and was hiding. Now, Andrews says his family, neighbors, even the sheriff's office were searching for little Hezekiah for quite some time. It wasn't, though, until Andrews got into his car to go and buy everybody some water that he found his grandson on the floor of his back seat. I turned around, I seen his little legs, and I, I you know, Hezekiah. And, and a dark ending to a very intense search effort. Andrew says he hopes at least parents can take something away from this tragedy. I have to live with that. My cross to bear, if you will. And uh, the first thing I should have done was go to my car. But hindsight's 2020.